You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, welcome. We are so happy to have you with us. Hopefully this is not your first show today. We're on our third. You are watching Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, the business talk show. I am your host, your executive producer, director, and broadcast engineer. We could not do this show if we did not have my phenomenal friend and co-host in the house with us. Welcome, Mr. Alcini. Hi, Dr. Jacqueline. It's such a pleasure. Woo! Great seeing you. Absolutely. It's so good seeing you. And <laughs> I just want to say before we bring out our guest, who, by the way, is terrific, and I have to pat you on the back. Congratulations for finding him. Um, this is not just a business talk show. This is the business talk show. And exactly I think right. uh, Robert J. Moore, our guest today, actually kind of nails it. That uh, That's his philosophy, and I looked him up a little bit, and it actually is very aligned with mine. I'm in the culture business, and culture is something everybody talks about, but nobody, it's like the weather. Everybody talks about it, but nobody ever does anything about it. Entrepreneurship is something that people talk about, but nobody really knows how to shape the behaviors that are required to become a successful entrepreneur. And, uh, you know, Robert's uh, come along today to help us and our audience figure that out. Yes, Robert's had an amazing journey, and I can't take credit for finding him. I have to say thank you, Philip Chan. Philip, we love you. Thank he you, is amazing, the, the network of people that he has. So before we bring Robert out, uh, he's had an incredible life journey, and through that journey, he's aligned himself with some of the most powerful influencers that we have in our culture. It's truly amazing. I watched one of his YouTube clips, and I think everybody should head over to YouTube and uh, and, and go to Robert J. Moore, subscribe to his channel. But he had Tony Robbins on there. You know, I am a huge Tony Robbins fan. I can't even tell you. I feel like... Like, I just like, please can I meet Tony Robbins? So I, this I guy like is Robbins. aligned with him. I, I think Tony Roberts ought to post a picture of himself with Robert Moore. Tony Robbins is, yes. So that we I can all see, in fact, that he's lucky to know Robert. But yeah, I'd say Tony Roberts is a pretty good connection to have. No doubt. He, he's amazing. So I, Robert J. Moore is a therapist. He's a coach. He's an internationally award-winning best-selling speaker, author, gentleman. I mean, I could go on and on and on. He's helped so many people, but it wasn't always the way it is today. He's also got something special that's happening soon that I'm going to let him talk about uh, that really distinguishes him from a lot of other people. Let's bring him out. Robert J. Moore, welcome. Hey, it's an honor to be here, Dr. Jacqueline. How are you doing, Al? <laughs> nice meeting you, Robert. Such a pleasure. I can go like this, like you guys. I know you're doing well. <laughs> no. You're no good at it's, that finger pointing thing either. So it, it's hard to figure out where we right. actually are on here because everybody's got a different screen. We're all focused in a different I know. spot. I know. Yeah. Well, I know it is, but we are just so delighted that you're here today. I know how busy you are, how wanted you are. People want you on their stage, whether it's virtually or in person. So, Robert, I'd like to just take a step back in time because you are not always the successful, world-renowned expert, uh, critically acclaimed publisher, speaker, author that you are today. So tell us a little bit about where it all began when your life needed to make a change? You know what, I was, let's go back a little further than that because then people will have a clear understanding where I'm at. Mm. I was a drug addict alcoholic. Um, right now I'm 15 years clean and sober, 15 years and a half I think I am now. But when you go back to when I was 13 years old, I felt emotionally distraught. I felt like I didn't fit in, in my house, my friends, whoever it was. So I, I basically joined a gang you know, to get recognized. And I got recognized all the wrong ways. So I wasn't wearing colors. I wasn't wearing bandanas or nothing silly like that. But I ended up doing 16 years in and out of jail. 
and living on the streets for seven years. But at the same time, I'm still drinking, I'm still drugging, and I'm losing people in my life. And, and how I dealt with it was just drinking again. So when I quit drinking 15 and a half years ago, I ended up putting myself through school and detox at first. The detox was hell to pay because I didn't know how to live or, or look in society or talk to society without actually having a drink or, or some or some drugs in my system. Hmm. So I had to learn to overcome the emotions that became of that and, and then identify things. So I went through and I ended up getting my social service worker diploma, my addictions degree, my BA in psychology, my master's in counseling psychology, my harm reduction, two mental health. And I also got 200 doctorate degrees. And I didn't get all that to brag. You don't see doctor in front of my name. You don't see any credentials behind my name. I did that to find out where I belong in life, to find out how I can help serve you. And that's where it all began, right there. That's really quite a story, Robert. And, uh, you know, I mean, the fact that you were able to start, well, it, it means that anybody could start anywhere and end mm -hmm. up wherever they want. That And that's a choice you can make right now today that's right. Maybe somebody like Robert can help you make that choice. That's what you do in your practice with coaching. I, do. I, I consult other businesses. It don't matter from grassroots right up to millionaires. No, uh, some billionaires I've, I've helped out. I've had one guy hire me for um, on basically put me on an airplane, fly me to his house once a month mm -hmm. and then come back. And then I'm, I'm coaching them at the same time. So I, I've been studied 52 of the top achievers in my life. Um, I had the Ziegler family call me when I was in the hospital. I had uh, Kyle Wilson, Jim Rohn's ex-business partner, coach me. Um, I've had Les Brown. I've, I've actually coached, been coaching Les Brown's daughter for the last three years. No kidding. How powerful is that? <laughs> 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 you're, coach, that is you're, you're trained by him. And it's like, well, what are you doing coaching my daughter? Well, I'm coaching her not to be like you. And I don't want to say that in a rude it's okay way. for her not to be. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like you're, you're powerful you. You're you. There's only one you. Yeah. And right. Your daughter yes. doesn't want to be you. Your daughter wants to be her. So mm -hmm. I teach people the foundation, the structure, and, and the behaviors. Cool. Okay. So let me Robert. try one. Oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. Let me try one out. I'm a guy who invented a candy called a Tootsie Roll, right? I'm the entrepreneur behind all that. My background is math. I'm a chemist. I came up with this candy. All I want to talk about is the shape of the candy and the mathematical formula of the cylinder shape of the candy. Obviously, I need to change my habits if I'm going to be able to sell Tootsie Rolls, don't I? Well, you have to relate it to other people. So some people, and I did counseling for, I was a therapist for 15 years. So yeah. I had to re reach out and do physiology of the, the, the face expressions, the body language and everything, and the hand gestures. I'll tell you something. If you were to come up to me and talk to me like that, I'd whack. But if you came up to me and said, what did you think of those Tootsie Rolls back in the day? You know, if you started the conversation and put a freshness to it, and then said, well, you know what, the cylinders, why, why do you think they're shaped that way? Now you're bringing them into your world, right? You're not just, mm. oh, you're not giving birth to it and scaring them away. That's I love that, that perspective. Yeah, yeah, a question I have for you is, and obviously this is the business show. We are just hopefully coming out of a pandemic, but there are plenty of business owners, new entrepreneurs who either lost their business, they're struggling, they're suffering, and they need to feel better. What are they doing? They're turning to drugs, possibly. They're turning to alcohol. They're turning to gambling, a number of things. So when somebody is going through something like that, you already went through what you went through. What can they do to, to help s them feel better and not go down a path that's going to end up disastrous? You got to want it. You got to want it, first of all. Um, you, people just come up and start telling you how to do things. You're not going to do it. But if you want it bad enough in your heart, body, and soul, like put it this way, I always tell people, if you put your head under water, what are you going to want? You're going to want air because we all need to breathe. But the problem is, here's the, here's the situation. Not a lot of people realize that when they put their, their dreams from their head to their heart and put the emotion behind it, they go for it. They actually achieve things that way. It's the mm -hmm. smallest goal that leads to the next goal. I used to go a minute at a time when I was clean and sober, just to get clean and sober a minute at a time, then five minutes. I stretched it. And then I said, okay, well, if, if, I, if I'm deserving of that piece, let me go one day. If I'm deserving of that, let me try a bigger goal and go a week. So I, I do the simplest goal that I thought was, then I started doing the unachievable. My first million dollars. I said, okay, I want to make a million dollars doing this and this, right? Well, I did it. You know, <laughs> it was it was crazy how you could put something towards it. It, it actually talks about that in uh, 
think of Grow Rich uh, Chapter 2. When they talk about you, you put a goal out there. So say hypothetically, you say, I want to make a million dollars by next May 29th, my birthday. Well, it's very achievable. It can even do it less than that. But the thing is, what are you willing to give up to do it, though? Good question. Mm. Very good question. We also. Yeah, that's this is this is our buddy Mitchell. Hi, Mitchell. Oh, Thanks for watching. For yeah, that's uh, and if if I mean I've known Mitchell for a couple of years. If there's anything he knows how to do, it's how to connect mm -hmm. with somebody, and it doesn't take him long to figure that out. And all of his first sentences start with uh, end with question marks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to have a, a call to action, right? Mm. The call to action is huge. Yeah. So that's great, Robert. Advice. When I listen to you talking and and about your journey, I can only relate from what I see on television. But what I've seen on television is when you're trying to get clean and sober, it's an extremely painful and difficult process. And the temptation to go back into the patterns of behavior that you're used to are always there. And it's the same type of thing in business, isn't it? That if you're yeah. used to running your business a certain way, used to marketing to clients a certain way, and it doesn't work, there are ways that you can change using a coach, getting some insights, but yet you're tempted to just keep doing it the same way because it's easy. You know, when you're looking at business, it is very much that way. Um, but the thing is, it's it's a revolving door if people want it to be. And that's what they're doing right now. They're leaving it as a, a revolving door because of the fact that they're not looking at the gap in between. The gap in between is learning your structure of your business. When I was early in the game, Right, I'll tell you something. I fired my entire staff. Give my so listen. I, I gotta let you guys go right now. If you're if you're interested in a couple more years down the road, then we'll work it. So I actually won the Guinness World Record working on my own and working on my business. So I did the marketing. I did this. I did that. I did. I learned all aspects of my business so nobody can come up to me and say, "Oh, we can't do this and we can't do that." Well, I just learned we can. You know what I mean? So you learn the foundation of your business, learn the structure of your business, and learn the behaviors that go along with it. If you're an angry kind of person, it's going to be hard for you to address a situation to somebody. Maybe you're not that person for it. I have a podcast system. I hired someone for last year. They're moving on because I upbranded them. I upbranded them, and now it's time for them to move on to the next coach where they can help them even more. And mm -hmm. I'm not selfish that way. So I got my podcast right now. And if I start doing it, it turns into a counseling session. So I'm not good at that. I know I'm weak at that part. So, I mean, needless to say, I'll still get on there and I'll just talk about the stuff I'm doing until I train someone else. That's really fascinating. And yeah. I, you are the only Guinness World Record holder that we've ever had on this or any show as of today. <laughs> you can see what's it behind involved, me. <laughs> yes. What's involved with that? It sounds so exciting. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. So here I am. Uh, the first time when I got sick um, it was uh, February 15, 2020, when I won that. And I had to work 12 months, 18 hours a day in order to make it happen. The problem is I ran myself down. I wasn't eating properly. I wasn't sleeping properly. And I ran myself down so bad that I ended up having that COVID. Right? Mm -hmm. I ended up having that COVID that they call COVID. Right. right? So, I mean, everybody's got their own belief on it. I just call it it was a bad flu or whatever it was. It was a bad bug. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I, I mean, I was, in, I was literally sicker than a dog i couldn't even do my own event i had to get someone to MC it for me on a on a pinch of a dime and they lucky they were willing to do it and they weren't scared to be up there and they were a close friend of mine so here's here's what happened basically I and mean, i went to the uh, hotel four days early mm -hmm. to try and sweat it out so i basically just wanted to be left alone and just sleep right so i got into the bed i had a winter coat on i was in the mm -hmm. hotel room i put that up to 80 and i had the heat just blaring out and i couldn't get couldn't get warm. I was frozen wow. until I went and got a big bucket of ice three, four times, put it in the bathtub, and I sat in the ice. And that brought my temperature down. Whoa. Wow. It was oh cold, but, I mean, it brought my temperature <laughs> down at least. <laughs> wow. And, and tell us about the Guinness record you won. I mean, what, what was the yeah, – Yeah, uh, I won that. What I did was I, I didn't want to be selfish. So the first one I won is I put it as my business name. My business name is the actual winner of it. So okay. if you find out the smaller one back there behind me, you'll see is Robert J. Moore's participant. So because I own the business and I branded myself with the business, um, what it is is 127 people sign, simultaneously signing the same book at the same time. So I went through three or four times with the Guinness World Record, and I asked them, 
how do I get to be a part of this? They said, well, the records are to be taken. I said, okay, well, let's, how do we do this then? And, and the thing is, I say it was in the UK, right? But, yeah. <laughs> but I brought it to Canada and how I did that is because I'm a publisher, I had to think quick. I always think outside the box. So I said to them, there's a board of 12 people on there and I'm on video with them. And I said, listen, here's what I could do. How about mm -hmm. I put all 150 people in, in a book, just put their bio in there. Once you put a bio in there, you make them an author. The only people that could sign that book is people that are authors in the book. Oh, right? So that yeah. was the thing. That was the kicker on, on the, the thing. So I had to have it that way and a spot for people to buy them at the same mm. time. We all had to sign the first, you know, like a minute, boom, sign it, and then put your hands up. Mm. No kidding. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Wow. that's Wow. <laughs> so it was 126 people we, we got to sign at the same time. And, and as you know, the big news is I'm doing another one in another month or so. Oh, no kidding. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. And this is the exact same one I'm doing, but online. Oh, wow. So yeah. so how will that work? How will that work, Robert? Well, it be like a Zoom call or, or like they want Zoom. So I got to do Zoom. So I got to take all the evidence possible, screenshots. I got to do videos. I got to make sure I go through however yeah. many people there. There's no record actually online yet for this one. So, yeah. I mean, I at least if I have 200 people, I win. And we do it right. So basically, I'll go through. I'll say I'm Robert J. Moore, number one. The person will go number two, number three, number four, all the way up to 200 people. And then what happen is from there, um, we'll all sign. I'll, I'll be switching screens and signing at the same time. And, and it would be a lot of go, go, go stuff. But I'll do it. Wow. <laughs> you know, it sounds it's, it's impressive. And your dedication is amazing. And I'm, you know, speaking now as a professional coach working with entrepreneurs, maybe you can answer this question. What is it that scares people from setting goals for themselves? Fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Fear of the unknown. They don't know where it's going to take them to. First of all, when you're looking at, when I was looking at, I was uncomfortable being uncomfortable, right? So if you if you learn the opposite way, if you learn to be comfortable in the uncomfortable, because that's how you're going to break through your stuff. That's how you're going to break through that next level. Yeah. That's how your coach is going to level you out. I've been a coach for 15 years now. And I'll tell you something, I've, I've helped some of the, the richest people out there. And the reason why I've helped them is because they lost track of their own stuff. They got too rich, too fast, and forgot about who they were working and what they were doing. And mm -hmm. they become this, they, they got something in their head that they're better than somebody else. And I had to bring them down to size and tell them, listen, you know what? I don't care what you think you are, you're not. First yeah. of all, what's your structure of your business? Well, I don't know. Well, how do you not know? So someone could be ripping you off and you don't know your own structure. Who are you serving, right? Like you got to do the mind map of this whole thing. Hmm. Well, so yes. helping entrepreneurs then is part of what you do, I guess, helping them overcome that. Yeah. Well, see, what I, what I do is I'm, I'm about on my Guinness World Record. The next one I'm doing is a hundred book I wrote, one hundred yeah. books. So I mean, I published one hundred books coming up, and it's going to be a huge celebration for that. Wow. I started off with writing my own story, and then I hired Ted McGrath to teach me how to tell my story, business type, personal either 90 seconds, 90 minutes, or 90 hours, <laughs> well, right? So, I mean, you can go as long as you want or as little as you want as long as you know how to tell your story properly. So mm -hmm. I get people to come in, and, and I usually get a, somebody that's usually famous, more recognized than me, to do a forward. For instance, I got a book right here I did. Mm -hmm. On this book here, if you know, you'll see forward by Sir John Chin, which is a Think You Grow Rich uh, uh, producer of that. So look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, then you got all the people in there. I got people like uh, Kyle Wilson, Jim Rohn's ex-business partner, Les Brown, Les Brown's daughter. I got a whole whack load of people doing doing forwards for me. And right. that's the key to it. And But when I do it, when I do a book like this, here's what I do. I let people come in, about 20 people at the most I bring in usually. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. I let them put their bio at the end of their chapter. So if someone likes what they someone said, now you got the bio in there. It's free advertising. Sure. You know, it's free yeah. advertising for that person. So it's a good marketing tool at the same time. Well, that that's the payoff for them. I mean, why wouldn't they want to help you? Yeah. Because it helps them too. And that's really clever. And crafting those little win-wins really is really a key to success too. Here's one other thing I did too that I did. So you see the book, you'll see all the people's names are down mm -hmm. here. So when they go and they sit there and say, oh, I'm in the book, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? Who do you see first? 
Yes. You're giving me a lot of great ideas because I have my second book coming out. You're writing them all down. I can see you taking (laughs) notes while uh, while Robert's talking. I'd love to publish you if you do. Yes, really good advice. Thank you. I'll reach out to you for that. We have to take a break. When we come back, I'd like to discuss something, and I've discussed this with Al. As an entrepreneur, there are always, for some reason, people who want you to fail. And there are people who give you their advice, give you their opinion unsolicited. And I'm wondering what your advice would be to people who are who are out there experiencing this. Can't wait so. to hear that. That's great. <laughs> and of course, I'm one of the people experiencing it. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. So let's take a break and we'll be right back with Robert J. Moore. We've got so much more to discuss. Definitely. Hey, everybody. My name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show. And I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws like gravity. But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There are 7.7 billion people on Earth today. 40% of these people are under the age of 25. Young adults are the most fertile mission field in the world today. In scripture, we see Jesus pouring his life into 12 young adults who he equipped to change the world and all of history. Like Jesus, we believe that the best approach to reach the world with the gospel is to invest in young emerging leaders and equip them to build disciple-making movements. Concentric is the notion of surrounding and sharing a common center. Our center is the model and strategy of Jesus for both leadership development and ministry formation. As a global alliance, we provide equipping in biblical leadership based on Jesus' example in the New Testament. Jesus modeled for us how to make disciples that reproduce. Focusing on leadership development is key to creating movements that spread the gospel and Jesus' disciple-making strategy to young leaders around the globe. Our Ministry Alliance partners are actively equipping leaders and building movements of multiplication that reproduce the life of Christ. Join us today to equip young leaders with Jesus' strategy that will change cities and nations. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAT partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Academy Sedan and Limo is a full-service transportation company serving the Philadelphia metropolitan area with full knowledge of the New York City, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. areas. We pride ourselves on being the most dependable, conscientious company in the industry. Our always on-time service and dependable pricing make us the company to call for any event or occasion. Our vehicles can accommodate any size party for any occasion. Our vehicles range from four-door sedans to SUVs to minivans to limo buses to full-size tour buses and can accommodate groups of two to 100. We offer airport shuttle service or over-the-road service without limitation regarding mileage or time and no drive is too long or too far. So if you find yourself in need of transportation of any type with any vehicle, give us a call at 610-842-4564 and let us show you what a real transportation company can do for you. 
Use code ACADEMY2020 to receive 20% off your first three rides, including parking and tolls. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome back. You are still watching Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, the business talk show with my co-host, Mr. Al Sini, and our guest, boy, do we have a doozy today, Mr. Robert <laughs> J. Moore. He is a therapist, five-time internationally awarded bestseller speaker, business coach, publisher, Guinness World Record holder, and he's about to do it all again. So in our first... I do too. In our first segment, Robert shared with us that life was not always so rosy, wasn't filled with all these awards and acknowledgments. He was drinking, doing drugs. He had been in prison and he turned his life around and now he's dedicated to doing the same thing for other people. So thank you, Robert, for being here. So before the break, I teed up the, the, the idea, something I deal with on a regular basis. People out there trying to break your groove, trying to get you out of your lane, comments, opinions. What do you do about it? I love naysayers. <laughs> you know what? It's because of naysayers why I'm doing so well. I'll be honest with you. Naysayers, really? naysayers make me want to try harder. Because you know what? I'm obviously doing the right thing if I'm pissing people off. Sorry to say, you know, here's the thing. I've had people come to me and they went to my went to my events. Literally, I bring hundreds of people. I fill rooms. I've done it by myself. And literally, they're taking paperwork and they're taking off back to the USA or somewhere, wherever they're at. And they're trying to be like me. Hmm. They forgot who they were, the structure of their business, who they are, who they're organizing, who they're putting their stuff out to. They forgot to mind map it, who they really can uh, address it to. And they're just trying to pitch it to everybody and anybody, and they end up in the hole because of the fact that they didn't know the structure. They didn't know how to put the business together. They just said, oh, it looks pretty easy. So they did the first three, four books. Now they're in whole $20,000, $30,000 and can't figure out how to be out of it. Mm. So, so if somebody, <laughs> yeah, what do you do? I actually, you know what? I, I sit there and give them kindness. Kindness will actually kill kill the person. You know, kill them more. If you get angry, what's that going to do? You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry. You're going to be. It's going to show in your videos. It's going to show in your in your poor working experience. Uh, you know, I can't give any less to someone that because they, they it wasn't them. I can't take it on someone else. You know, when I when it doesn't matter if I go to prison today and I speak at a prison for free. It doesn't matter if I go down the road and speak to a hundred thousand people there and get paid fifty thousand dollars at that event. I'm not going to give less than I do at the prison when I'm doing it for free. I'm going to give 110% no matter what because of the fact that I rely on me and I respect me. And I want to brand me. It's all about branding me, right, and my yeah. business. But the thing is you want to be careful because you don't want to overbrand yourself. There's too many people go out there and they're overbranding themselves and make it look like, oh, me, 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 right? So you got to be careful. You have to get the value. Where's mm -hmm. the value in there? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I'm, I've been tracking some of the comments. I'm, I'm going to put this up because it's kind of gratuitous. It helps helps you, Robert. Uh, our friend Mitchell wants to know if you have audio books. I do have the, my very first one, uh, Magnetic Entrepreneur. It is an audio book, that one there. The reason why I didn't do too many of those is because, you know what, the audio books, I find they're good, but they're not selling as much as you think they are. Really? You know I mean, yeah, they don't sell as much as people think they are. People, I don't know, they like tangible having a book in their hand. And I and I, I sat down with uh, Jack Canfield. I sat down with Mark Victor Hansen, Crystal, the wife. And they even say the same thing. That audio books, they're there. But, see, I don't care about making money online. I right. send all, all that stuff I make online, the sales of the books, I send it to Feed It Forward at Toronto. And it's a place out there where Chef Jagger Gordon actually literally put together a place where people can come and eat for free if you want. If you don't have groceries or whatever, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pay as you can. He takes all the stuff from Walmart, mm -hmm. takes all the stuff from the grocery stores that are actually turned brown. He takes those layers off and makes something out of it for those people. Wow. Mm, I love yeah, that. I, 
I, I, Dr. Jacqueline, you started a conversation just before the break that I wanted to pick up on because I think Robert's take on this could be really interesting. You uh, did time in, in prison on and off. Yeah. You had all those problems. Your family knew it. Your friends all knew it. And then one day you wake up and you're living a new life and you tell everybody, this is what I'm going to be doing instead. How do you deal with all the people who said, what a load of crap. He's never going to be able to make it. Well, it's all about when you, how many times did you cry wolf before? Right. Uh, I um, cried wolf so many times. And I have my brothers. I mean, to be honest with you, I had three of my brothers already died because of drugs and alcohol. Oh. One died last year, February uh, 27th. One died uh, five, six years ago, April 1st. And the other one died 20 years ago. Um, and, and they're all drugs and alcohol related. Wow. So the thing is, I've been clean sober for 15 and a half years. The other two got to see it. They admired it. They just didn't know how to face their own emotions. Yeah, yeah. When, you're, when you're drinking and drugging, you're trying to hide the person you really are. Hmm. You're trying to hide the identity you are. So the problem that comes out of this whole thing is when I was trying to get clean sober, I didn't want to face those emotions. I didn't want to learn what was I was comfortable being uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like it was it was very uncomfortable, but I was comfortable in my own shit, as you could say. Sure. Right. Um, yeah. But the problem is, uh, was I really happy? No, because I wanted more. Well, well, it's a, it's, it's a hell of a story. And, uh, you know, you're really connecting. You talk about the power of connections. You're really connecting with Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need mean, uh, we'll have a good uh, chat. Another one. His point is haters hate success, especially comeback success. That idea that you can change your life. A lot of people are jealous and they'd, they'd like to throw a roadblock or two in front of you if they can. And you ignored all that? What did you do? How did you handle it? You know what? I've had so many people. I've had people rip me off. I've had people get business. Oh, yeah, well, let's work for a month. So I give them, I felt sorry for them, or maybe I felt sorry for myself or just wanted somebody to work with at the time. Yeah. It's hard to say. I used to have my, my, my heart on my sleeve all the time. And, you know, oh, it's okay. Just pay me next week. Well, you're giving way too much to the person. And mm -hmm. now the person can actually take your business or whatever you're teaching them. And they can actually start their own stuff and forget about you. And it was like, wow, I need that. I need, I can't go through that again. That hurt. I mean, it's like hundreds and thousands of dollars. So some of the top lawyers I've counseled because of drugs and alcohol, when I was a drug and alcohol counselor and a therapist, um, I actually got the, I, I actually did <clears throat> counsel some high end judges and some high end lawyers, bikers, whoever, you know, all these weird people that you would never consist of thinking that you would actually talk to. Mm. I'm in the room with them, and they're just pouring their heart out, and they're just humans. Mm. They just took a turn in life that they want to be recognized, like myself. I took a turn in my life where I felt more comfortable being around these people because they're doing the same thing that I was doing. Drinking, drugging, fast cash, fast money, fast women, whatever it could be. Right. Right? And I found out later on that wasn't me. I was just an act just to cover up the way I felt. Right. So I, you're covering up all the things you're doing. And I did do a book uh, from rock bottom to success, which I went out to the UK and I got the uh, author's awards right there, wherever hmm. it is, somewhere back here, <laughs> that way, <laughs> that way. I can't even figure out how to do it there. Cool. <laughs> you know, you're running out of colors for your book covers, buddy. What's that? You got so many books now, you're running out of colors for your book covers. Well, I see, not all of them like that. I get them all different ones now. I just, yeah, I am running out of colors. I, I, <laughs> you know, it's great. I'm, I'm, I can't. You're you're amazingly prolific. I have to give you a lot of credit for that. Great stuff. Well, you know, I told one person he's a New York Times bestseller, and I told him I said four or five years ago, I said, uh, just to let you know, I said I'm going to close down your publishing business. He didn't take too kind to that at first. <laughs> he's like, now he's like, how are you doing this? And I said, first of all, integrity is one. You got to have integrity. And, and I'm the kind of person, I'm not scared to put my, my words out there. If it's someone that's done something, I will tell them. Like I've literally kicked some of the top people off my stage. Literally, just put the music up, get up on stage and kick them off. They come up to me afterwards and said, what are you doing that for? Why are you kicking me off the stage? You know who I am? I don't really care who you are. The point is, if you're on my audience and you're being rude to my audience, you're out. You know what I mean? That's not integrity. That's, that's wrongdoing right there. You can't be doing stuff like that. You got to treat people the way you want to be treated. If they're down and out, so what? Bring them up. You know, Kim Sue Burke, look at the solution focused therapy. Look at the focus on the stuff they're doing well, and let's improve that instead of looking at the negativity. Well, well. 
I, I think I, that's I great. Think that's that's great. very lofty, lofty. And, and it makes a lot of sense. And you don't talk down to people, Robert, which is yeah. as soon as you start judging people, you lose them. And you, you can't do that. So well, I, See, I've become a Christian uh, in my travels of being re in recovery. But mm -hmm. my mother-in-law still states that God's going to help my tongue one day because I do have a little loose tongue at times. <laughs> 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 Robert, first of all, I wanted to say I'm really sorry about your brothers. I, I can't imagine what, what that was like. And for people who are watching who have addictions, people in the family, they've lost. Who was the first person that you remember? You know, a lot of famous people. You're famous. Who was the first person when you weren't famous that is came into your life? This this is a hilarious question. Right? Well, you know, I mean, this is hilarious. So I got into my counseling and that. And I started counseling people. So I had the very first person sit in front of me. And now, mind you, I told you I was going in and out of courts all the time. So the first person got in front of me, I got to like him, but I didn't know what he was doing for work. So finally, I asked him what he's doing for work. And he was one of the top, top, and I mean, quote, unquote, top lawyers in Toronto, a defense lawyer. And I, and I oh, my God, really? What happened here? <laughs> you know what I mean, so he already knew who I was. <laughs> so he no came to he you. Was. He, he came, came to, to you for yeah. coaching. Wow. Yeah. How same about with, that? Same with Mr. Canada. One of the guys from Mr. Canada, I can't say which one, Mr. Canada, the bodybuilder, he came to me too. And uh, I counseled him for six months. Um, you know, I've I've helped out so many different people. I've, it's estimated 160,000. I think that's really, really that's, low personally, but it hmm. sounds like a good number to uh, achieve because it's not too high. Just like being a five-time international best-selling author, honestly, that's as low as I can go without insulting myself. Because honestly, I think all my books went international bestseller, and I and I do sometimes I do it within five minutes and sometimes an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, congratulations. That that brings me to the next topic about Magnetic Entrepreneur Inc. So I just mentioned to you quickly in the private chat that I published my first book. And I'm and looking to the second, second one, one, and I'm going to reach out to you. you. But so the first one I did with Amazon. So for people who are out there, and everybody's writing a book, it seems like, what's the value of working with a publisher as opposed to self-publishing? And why work with Magnetic Entrepreneur, Inc.? Okay, the first question would be, um, when you're working with a publisher, don't do what I did. I said, ah, you know what? I can do it on my own, my very first book. I, I went out there. It took me two and a half years to put together. Um, but the problem is doing it myself on Google, Googling it out, putting it this way, that way, this way. It cost, it cost me over 50 grand. The people that I hired to actually put the book out there because I was so new, they saw me coming. They actually only gave me $500 and said, okay, you only sold so many. The problem is I knew where the hub was. I figured out where the hub was with the, with the libraries. And every library in Canada ended up having one of my books. And they always order three at a time. So they told me I only sold 30 books. But really, how many books did I really sell? If you got all the libraries in Ontario into a hub, how many are you really selling? So all together, I went to the lawyer. And he says, Robert, one thing you need to know is these are small-time people. If you actually go and try and sue them, they're going to claim bankruptcy, open up in a new name, and you can't do nothing about it, hmm. right? So that's where you need to be careful. If you're going to work with a publisher, work with me. If you work with me or someone on my team, we work with you, all right? We don't sit there and say, okay, the deadline says 12 o'clock at noon hour. On this one, this day over here, we're going to stop. No, I said straight out forward until you're published. If it takes a year, it takes a year. If it takes five months, it takes five months. If it takes three weeks, it takes three weeks. But I guarantee you, whatever's on that statement, I will guarantee to have. And that's just working with me. I love empowering other people, no matter what level you're at. I love making sure that you get your story out there proper and the right way to do it. If you don't tell your message the right way, you could actually hurt yourself. If you tell it the right way, you got to be careful not to overdo it. Mm. And, and when should a, a budding author or maybe someone who's got a lot of experience in writing, when should they contact you? Does the book have to be finished? They can actually contact me when the thought process is there. Hmm. I got people in the UK I'm working with right now. And once a week, I actually, I, I get a package right now that I actually do that I actually work with the people. And I actually coach the people for a half hour per week to get them to learn how to do the process in the book, to get their thoughts out there. Because a lot of people you'll notice, they scattered. 
a lot of things are scattered when you're doing the book. But the thing is, you want to do it so the readers can understand it, not so your friends can understand it. There's a <laughs> difference there. Your friends will buy it no matter what just to support you. But will the readers actually digest it and then put it on to the next person? That's the key. Mm. And most people probably don't think about that. I'm an outside the box thinker, like I said. <laughs> I, I know a bunch of authors and they're more thinking about what they have in their heads and what you know, another thing, another thing I want to say is if you're not, if you're becoming an author, you see all these authors becoming rich in that. It's not because of the book. Yeah. It's because of the credibility the book brings. The book, mm. Don't sit there and say, okay, well, oh, I got a book now. Okay. This is going to make me a million dollars. This mm. book probably only made me 50 bucks and it's been out for a while. Some of the books I have never made any money at all. Now check this out. The credibility that that book gave me, gave me a million dollars. That's where the money came from. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, I was going to say that the book that I just published, it sells for nineteen ninety nine. I get eight dollars and eighty five cents. So I'm never getting rich on that book. <laughs> so, and I, I think people don't realize that. <laughs> and you also you know, get. Uh, I, go ahead. I was Al. just going to say, uh, God's still waiting for his first royalty check on the Bible. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, we we need to take another break. Um, and Mitchell has, we've got a lot of comments from Mitchell here. So uh, Mitch, stay with us. We're glad you're here. And uh, we're going to take a, a just a break and hear from two of our sponsors. The world of healthcare is benefiting us in many ways, but the risk of becoming a victim to an airborne infection is increasing at a fast pace too. There are threats from viruses, allergic pollen, and chemicals which cause you loss of health, income, business, mental health, family and friends. All are at stake. One solution to this threat are the BV Air Sanitation Passive Base Systems. When you call our team on 0208 104 3253, you find out about the amazing protection available. Protection that uses certified Batterfield tested, standard and customized air disinfection systems for your personal and business use. Each system uses a filterless technology known as Placide, which attacks all airborne particles with micro lighting to destroy and eliminate viruses and other harmful particles in your office, transport and home. You also benefit from extra bonuses such as low running and maintenance costs, no regular filter and part changes. You get to work with our trained experts and professional staff and be made aware of the latest in airborne protection and disinfection strategies. Strategy. Keep yourself healthy by working with our trained experts and Placide virus killing systems, which keep you safe from airborne viruses. BV Air Sanitation Limited. We save lives, save businesses, and prevent infection. Schedule your free consultancy call and virus protection checklist. Call 0208 104 3253 or connect to us on www.bvbuster.com. listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. 
my name is Al Sini, and of course, I'm joined by the one and only Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Hello. And we have a great guest, a uh, terrific guest. Robert Moore is jo uh, uh, you, your company is Magnetic Entrepreneur. Robert, do I have that right? I couldn't understand it. We kind of froze in there for a second. It could have been uh, Magnetic uh, Magnetic Entrepreneur. That's it. Yeah. So, magnetic so Entrepreneur, think, yeah. Now, okay, so if we have somebody out there, we're, we're connecting with people who might be watching the program who should call you. If you're thinking about writing a book, now's the time to reach out uh, to Robert J. Moore. If you're a speaker or maybe you're newly installed in a position that requires that you do some speaking and you're terrified of the thought, can you help Robert J. Moore? Is that something you do? Yeah, I've been known to help a lot of people with speaking. I, I love helping other businesses reach that next level, too. Uh -huh. um, when you talk about speaking, you got to learn to tell your story. It's the exact same thing as doing, doing a book, but you're doing it live. So when you learn how to do tell your story the proper way, you can do it on stage, you can do it in your campfire, you can do it anywhere you want. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because then you're not so nervous. I remember the first time I spoke, I was so nervous. I was just getting clean and sober. I was like three months clean and sober. And the guy came up to me and says, Robert, he says, I need a big favor. Well, I'm a big guy. So I figured, okay, I'll help you move the box. Where's the box? I'll help you move it. He goes, no, 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 that's not what I mean. I need your help because there's a speaker never showed up today and I, I got a spot for 20 minutes. Can you speak? I looked around and I said, okay, when? He said, about an hour from now. I said, yeah, that's no problem. There's only about 50 people here. That was no problem. But then when I got up there, there was like 300 people up there. Yeah. It was like, whoa, what do I do? So I learned, never worry about what the people are looking at. Never worry about that. If you touch them with your heart, and you put your heart out there, I hardly ever remember what I speak about. Because the thing is, I'm speaking from the heart, not the gutter. You speak from the gutter, you remember everything. That's important. So, yeah, that's really important. So, Robert, when someone's going to do a speech, you know, we in my corporate career, I always hold, heard, prepare, rehearse, be organized, don't <laughs> fidget. Are any of those things really valid? You know what? I, I went in a contest once. And I, and I literally studied my arse off. The only time I've ever done, I lost the contest because when I come in third place, the person that actually won actually had a piece of paper in front of their face like this the whole time, and they're shaking, and they actually won because they said it better. Me was, I had to sit there and think about fidget, what I was going to say. Just be natural. Be yourself. You know what I mean? You know your stuff. If you're being invited to speak somewhere, you know your stuff. You know what I mean, that's a, I don't sit there and look, oh, I better put notes here, better put notes here to talk to you guys. The hell with that? I just go with the natural flow. You, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm listening I'm listening to you just talk. I, you're you're in a constant inner dialogue with yourself, Robert. I can yeah. tell. So so you're always talking to yourself, you're always getting in touch with yourself. When you stand up in front of a group and grab the microphone, all you're doing is saying it now out loud so that everybody else can listen in. So that's it's really a you're, you're totally comfortable with, you're having it all day anyway. And you look in the mirror, you look in the mirror and always say to yourself first thing in the morning, I'm well and worthy. Uh, I right. used to hate myself. I used to hate myself and everybody around me. Sure. Because I didn't like the what I was doing, didn't like my behavior. So I come out with EBO system, uh, emotions, behaviors, and outcomes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put that in here afterwards. I'll put a link in there afterwards so people can actually look at that, the EBO system. And Great. if you go on LinkedIn, on Magnetic Entrepreneur, you can actually see it on there too. Um, or you can go on Facebook. I'm going to put it on Facebook on Magnetic Entrepreneur there too, Inc. Or you can go on Robert J. Moore and I'll put it on there too. You know, that uh, reminded me of one of the things that our buddy Mitch had kind of tweeted in <laughs> while, you, while you were talking, and that's the value of outcomes. Yeah. And, and so that whole idea that the way we feel and the way we behave are really the source of all of our outcomes means that if we can learn to master those, we can improve our lives. Very simple, very simple situation. People, they, they want the overnight success to be happening ASAP, but they forget they got to do the work in between. My mm -hmm. overnight success took 15 and a half years to reach. 
<laughs> Robert, a question I have for you, and Al, why don't you weigh in on this as well? So we interview a lot of people on other shows that we have. They're very spiritual. We have psychics who come on. And yesterday I was speaking with a psychic, and she asked me if I had this, if I had put on my invisible cloak of protection so that anything outside of me would be like a wall, be bounced off. So my question for you is, as a coach and somebody who's come through so much, do you believe that's, or, or what role do you think spirituality has and, and the power of affirmations for a business owner? Is it important to, to be spiritual, to tell yourself that, yes, you can, you're good enough? Al, you go first. Uh, you know, I never really believed there was very much to it. And part of my problem, I think, the challenge for me is that I'm not really a member of an organized religion. I don't relate to organized faith personally, but there is something I think very spiritual about succeeding. And I think when we channel something bigger than ourselves and that comes out of us, people want to follow us. I think that's where the attraction comes from. So, you know, when Robert J. Moore is talking about Robert J. Moore, he's talking about the aspirational things that make Robert J. Moore who he is. When we hear that, we want to we want to hear more. So that was my take on it. How about you? You know, when you're looking at a situation like that, that's very well said, by the way. I, you know, like I believe in a higher power bigger than me. You know, I never used to believe in the word God. And then because it was always in, in recovery, they would always say, God this, God that. And they'd always put you in the bottom of a basement of a mm -hmm. church, right? And mm -hmm. I got the AA program, NA program down in church. I'm like, well, I despise God because I think he put me through this. When I learned to take the responsibility for myself, yeah. things started changing. So I took the responsibility for myself, and I and I learned the concept of a higher power. Something outside of me is helped guiding me. You know, it could be the universe. It could be the feelings of the universe. It could be whatever you're throwing out there. You're you're actually achieving back for your own good. You're actually attracting everything out there that's happening, believe it or not. The movie The Secret talks about that law of attraction, too. So here's the thing. When you're looking at something spiritual, you got to believe in something that's very possible to happen because we have limited beliefs. Our limited beliefs will only allow us to go so far. So when you go limited beliefs, oh, I can't reach out because, what do you mean because? Don't make up excuses for something or justify something because you can't do it. You can mm -hmm. do it and stop making up justification for it. <laughs> It, it, and so it's not praying to God to do something for you. It's praying to God to make it possible for you to do something for yourself. Yeah. Or, or I pray for other people to be better. Yeah. I mean, I like, I'd rather pray for someone else to be better because you know what? I'm doing exceptionally well. All right. I know what I know when I'm doing something, the more money I make, the more I can help. Hmm. The more, the more interest I get out there, more people recognize me, the more I can help. Yeah. Wow. Very powerful. I was just thinking about what you said, Al, and also what you said, Robert. And I think whether it's God or creator or believing in the human good or helping other people, I feel like that's all really paramount and necessary if you want to succeed. Because if you think it's just about you and it's just about money, then it's not. Then you're missing the whole point. It's got to be. You know, I was broke you. for the first year. I was broke for the first year I was working. I didn't know how to do it. I had no business. I didn't know nothing. I had to learn all these things while I was going. I, I and, and I'll tell you a little concept of like knowledge of what we think out there. I had a guy sit beside me the very first time I was at a, an event. I was saying to myself, well, where am I going to get my first student or first client? I call them students now because I don't like calling people client because I was a, I was a therapist for so long. Right. So I'd rather, rather call them student so that way they don't look like they're being mental health cases or something like that sure. or emotional right. bounded or something. So here I am sitting beside a guy, and I, and I hate to say it, but the guy smelled like pig shit, like he was on a farm or something, and, and looked like he really needed the help. He was, he was like, looked like he was burnt out. He looked like he was tired. I didn't even know if he had a home at the time. <laughs> well, I was being judgmental, literally being judgmental, and that's why I just I'm coming up with a book right now. Don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> Poor clothes can hide a rich man's hurt, right? Mm. Because this guy here ended up being. Uh, thick and grow rich and Napoleon Hill's uh, operations manager. He was just helping a friend move and happened to be on the firm. Well, yeah. that's right. Because people, we all make 
split decisions about somebody and we have no idea who they really are. So we've got to leave judgment behind. It, it, yeah. Especially you considering people do such a good job fooling us into thinking there's something they're not. They work very hard at it all the time. So, uh, oh, yeah. 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 That's really great. That's why I'm not scared to tell people my background because it's not going to haunt me if I tell people. No, exactly it, it, right. it's, it helps, <laughs> if anything. And, you know, I, I do also want to make the point. You started at a kind of a rock bottom, and a lot of people are experiencing a rock bottom, and they need help from you. But there are an awful lot of people out there that are doing well but could be doing better if they just sort of reached a little mm -hmm. bit. And, you know, getting over those little blocks that are holding us back from even more is something else you can help them with. Isn't that true, Robert? There's always, if you're the smartest person in the room, get the hell out of that room, first of all, because you're not learning. Uh, um, straight out forward, if you want to learn, if you want, I don't care if you're a multi-billionaire, zillionaire, I don't care where you're at. Mm. It's how you conduct yourself is how you make your money. All right? So if you're learning your business, you treat your employees perfect and, and really the way you want to be treated, you're going to go places. But you yeah. need to learn what you're putting out there to people. You need If someone comes up to you and say, listen, what do you do for a living? If I tell them I'm just a publisher, I'm not just a publisher. I help people empower themselves and get their story out there. I help businesses grow to the next level. I consult them and I have tangible proof. What I give them is six months of training and two days on my masterminds that are evidently gonna grow. I've had so many people grow to six figures from broke. Really? Wow. I make six figures just on Facebook alone, multiple six figures on Facebook alone. Mm. That is fascinating. Can you, sh I know we're coming to the end of the show, but can you share more about that? Because I know there are many people who have tried to do Facebook promotions and it fails. So are you, I don't do promotions. I never paid, paid a dime, never paid a dime into promoting my business. I don't even have a website. I don't even have business cards. I think they're a thing in the past. Use landing pages. Landing pages are there, right? Use them. They're free. You can actually get them for free. Mm -hmm. Why spend money where the money don't need to be spent? When you're giving it away for free, I'm going to use it. You know what I mean? So I put the stuff out there. I have, like I got a VIP coming up. A VIP. I got a beautiful backyard here. Big one. I got a big barbecue. I renovated the whole house. This right here I'm in. I just built all this. Not nice. long ago. It's a 9 by 12 shed, but I built it into my office. Good. Right from scratch. Right, I cut the trees down and put it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I found, I, I found you in no time on LinkedIn, and you have a great LinkedIn profile that says everything anybody needs to know about you, uh, including how to get a hold of you, which is what yeah. they need to do next. That's the most important thing. So I want to know, you've got this Guinness Book record coming up, and that's huge. What else is in the future for you? Well, yeah, I should like, say uh, Guinness I mean, World Record. Edward, you know, I'm the kind of person that I'll disappear for a month or two. And then when I come back out, you'll know I'm done something big because I do all the hard work underneath the scenes. So you guys don't have to do the hard work. Guinness World Record. All you have to do is sign up, sign the book, pay the money to get in first, buy the tickets like three fifty. Or if you're if you really want to be a host, uh, not a host, uh, the person that is on the holder. If you want to mm -hmm. be a holder along right beside me, it's a five thousand dollar deal. It's simple. That's not much money at all to be a holder. I have to pay forty grand for it. Mm. I got to pay 40 grand <clears throat> to make this happen for you guys. And guess what? I've worked a year to do it. You'll be working, what, five minutes? Five minutes. Five yeah. minutes to actually make it happen. It's a but I can shot. guarantee you the package I have that goes along with it is a lot of advertising, a lot of VIP day with me. You get to learn more, you know, and you get a certificate at, right behind me. So, Robert, is this open to basically anyone and everyone? Anybody. It don't matter if you're an author, I'll make you an author because all you got to do is put your bio in the book. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. I love Good. it. So, Mitchell, so I'm sure they that, go on, go on Eventbrite, right? Actually, I'll put a posting underneath this, underneath all the links I've seen here. So, what I'll do is I'll just go underneath there and just put that uh, here. You can get yourself a ticket for the Guinness World Record. Participate. Boom. Here it is. Wow. Okay. That sounds very exciting. Um, Yes, I was going to say we could create a quick banner if uh, if we still have time. Do you want to put it in the private chat and then I'll copy and paste it? No, I would just put it the other way because you know what? When you do it this way, people can't click it to go to it. And I found, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, as an entrepreneur, if people if people have to put things in, they won't do it. It's too hard for them to do. If they can click it, it's the easy way for them to do it and they attend. Believe it or not, it's 
honest to God, I, I've seen it too many times. It's like people paying for an event, they're not showing up. You have 100% tickets sold, but the problem is only 60% will show up. Well. Now, what's usually the reason for that? Because they, they want to sit there and say they tried. Mm -hmm. They want to sit there and say, well, I did it. I, I paid for it. Oh, I got busy. I can't do it. It's because it wasn't on their priority list. It wasn't right. their branding. They didn't see it as the branding. They didn't see the value of it. They didn't see how it can be uh, authentic for them. They didn't, I mean, they'd rather go to Walmart and their PJ still. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so then, then they go off and tell everybody they tried it and it sucks and it doesn't work. Yeah. But the real mistake is everybody else believes them. You know, it's just like Alcoholics Anonymous. And I hate, I hate to bring it up because they say it's anonymous. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something straight forward. The reason why they say Alcoholics Anonymous is don't go around bragging about it being Alcoholics Anonymous because you went there and you failed. Now it gives that a bad name. That's why it's anonymous. But you know what? Here's the thing. You went there and failed. It wasn't them that failed. It was you. It was you. You failed. Mm -hmm. So if you're yeah. an entrepreneur going in circles, you failed. You're not, yeah. being, you're not utilizing your skills. Why aren't you utilizing your skills? You owe you. There you go. There it is. Uh, one last topic quickly, if you have time. Uh, so when is it, and Al and I've discussed this before, but they have this on Shark Tank all the time. Somebody mm -hmm. comes in, they mortgage their home, they borrow money from their relatives, they've got sales, they've got inventory, and then Mr. Wonderful will say, this isn't a business, this is just a hobby. So if you're a business owner out there, how do you know if you have a hobby or if it's a real business? You know what? My business right now, to me, feels like a hobby, but it's, it's bringing in the money of a business. All right. See, the thing is, the books I'm doing is empowering other people to help with the books. That feels like a hobby. But when I'm empowering other people and seeing the success behind it and I'm consulting them in their business to that next level, it's they're blinded. They're blinded by their own stuff. And that's the difference. The difference is they're not being blinded when they're working with a coach that can walk them through that bullshit they've already been through. Like there's so many different roadblocks. The thing is people want, I want that now. I don't want to work on it. I want that now. Well, that's how you fail. You can't wrap your head against the wall and sit there and say, okay, I'm going to do it now. You have to put the action involved in it. Put the action involved where you want to be. I'll look at myself 10 years down the road. 10 years down the road, that's the person I want to be. You know how many people said to me, Strail Ford? Hmm. Okay, well, have you ever caught up to him? Well, he's 10 years down the road. I keep being 10 years down the road because that's the person I want to be. I'll never catch up to him. I'll yeah. just achieve what I want to be in that moment. So 10 years down the road, that's what I'll be like. And then 10 years down that road, I'll be another person. And that will be upbranding myself. Wow. Woo! Yeah. I just, love it. Just we, based we, on what I'm hearing from Robert, uh, in the early 90s, I, I registered this URL called Tree Free Press. And I told everybody, I'm going to find authors. I'm going to put books online because I think people will want to buy books online. And they all said to me, that's the stupidest idea I ever heard. <laughs> I like going to B. Dalton and Borders. I enjoy shopping for books in stores. Nobody's ever going to want to buy a book online. Now that I've heard Robert, I want to go back in time in a time machine <laughs> And kick my 1991 self right in the ass. You know what? Look at <laughs> look how many people are actually going to uh, the store to buy books now. Mm -hmm. That's actually both movies. Where's Blockbuster? <laughs> that's, yes, where's that's Blockbuster a great point. Today? Where's Blockbuster today? Now, where at, are they? Where were you looking at? One the left books. in Bend, Oregon. There's still still one one I also want to give a shout out to Carla. Um, <laughs> yes. She's one of the co authors, beautiful people. And you know what? She's made uh, international bestseller with me. No. Uh, Carla says, for those on the radio, he calls it like it is. This is refreshing to see. Thank you, Thanks, Carla. Carla. Really, really great. Robert, I hate to let you go because <laughs> there's so much more you, we can back. learn from you. We have to bring you back. But uh, what's the best way for people to reach you? And I know there's a multitude, but if you could just try to summarize, what are the services that are available right now for people to partner with you? Well, I mean, uh, people can become a Guinness World Record holder, or they could become a participant, or they could be bring their business to a new consulting level, uh, or they could do a chapter in one of the books I have, or they could write their own book and, and be uh, coached through the whole system. 
Um, but at the same time, there's there's some pain and everything going on. There's some people dying of you know depression. People people mm -hmm. dying because of things going on with their life. I am still a registered therapist. If you need to talk to someone um, on confidentiality level, you can do that. Also, you just have to reach out, and that's the biggest problem people don't do is reach out. They don't know how to reach out when they need it. They only have to reach out when they want to give thanks. It's like God. For instance, you know what? When I had that 2-4 in the morning, I was thanking God for that because I was starting to feel better. I thank God for all the good things that happened in my life, but I forgot him when I was doing the bad things. Figure mm -hmm. that out. All the bad mm -hmm. things happen. You think I ever reached out to him? I'd reach out to him say, make it better. When it was better, I never reached out to him. Yeah. Figure that out. So to get a hold of me, Robert J. Moore on Facebook. Uh, make sure they mention somebody because I, I, I'll do my due diligence and I'll screen you. Uh, the reason for that is because there's a lot of useless people come on there and say, oh, I was checking out your stuff. I, I really think it's cool. What, how's your health doing? Well, I'm not going to buy into your stuff, buddy. Right. You know what I mean? That's not how you do it. I want to I want to tangibly get to know you. Yeah. That's how we work. right? If I tangibly get to know you, I will put you on as a Facebook. And don't go right at me on sales. I'm not going to do it to you. All right. If you happen to like what I'm doing, I'll put the stuff out there on my Facebook. If you happen to like it, so be it. Then you come to me and say, look, I'm really interested in this, or I'll do the same to you. That's the only way to work it. Or go on Magnetic Entrepreneur. You can't miss it. LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, Facebook. So, <laughs> Yeah, you brought up a really good point. It still amazes me when I get emails from people that are all about them selling me something. It's oh, like, please. wait a minute. I don't even know you. And this is all about wow. you. I, I want saw your organic, interview today. Organic relationship. Uh, I saw your interview today. You did a really good job. It was great listening to you. And by the way, you look like a guy who could use a retractable awning in his backyard. <laughs> you know how many people came to me and told me that they could bring my business to the next level? And I actually openly looked at them and did my due diligence. And they yeah. had no clue my wife. Nothing. Nothing. No. As soon as I give them my bio, it's like, Oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's what I got. Oh, that's when you want to close them. Close them. That's it. They're a client. <laughs> Robert J. Moore, it, it's been such a pleasure having you here and Great work, buddy. so proud of you, everything that you're doing. And thank you, Philip Chan, for making the introduction. It's just definitely great guy. So uh, we'd that's love to have you back on. Here with both of <laughs> well, we're honored, and I definitely am going to reach out to you about publishing my next book, Behind the Mask. I can teach you a few tricks. I'll I'm bet. sure you can. I'm sure you can, <laughs> and I always want to learn. I'm all about learning more from somebody who's already done it. You know, my very, very first book that I ever put out there. Now, my name is Robert J. Moore, as you see, M-O-O-R-E. Well, it was There's More to Life. That was my first book, but I had to take that uh -huh. one off. I had to take that one off. I'll tell you the reason why. I had a lot of f bombs on there. So when I became a Christian, it was kind of well, with, with this book. So right. I had to right. rebrand that to uh, a different wording. Good, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Always learning. Good for you, Robert. <laughs> I appreciate okay. the time. Thanks. Thank you. We appreciate your time, and I'll definitely be in touch with you. All right. Cheers. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love when we have someone like Robert who he speaks on huge platforms with other people who are so well-known, and he came here today to speak with us that are not as well-known yet. <laughs> but, 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 but the way you get well-known is by, you know, it, it, and it really shouldn't ever – I mean, person, we're in the personality business, which is sort of unfortunate in a way, because the bigger the bigger service that we provide are ideas. We're really in the idea business. So uh, the, the beauty of a great idea is you can find it anywhere. You don't have to get it from a Tony Robbins or, or a Deepak Chopra. The really great ideas are in the minds of people that maybe you haven't heard of yet. And that's why it's always such a pleasure to bring pretty well-known guys out like Robert but uh, we're making changes in a lot of people just because we're sharing his ideas. It's a real honor for me. And, and it is for me too. And uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. So thank uh, you so much, great. Al. You're, you've got eight, how many shows are you doing now? 46, 47 shows? 
I have 18 shows and we just added one more that starts next week. It's called An Audience with Celebrity Psychic Gemma. And her name is Gemma Stacy, and she's all over Clubhouse. And it's kind of interesting, just a, a quick segue. So she's so about authenticity that we are not going to have any of the guests be able to contact her. She's not going to know any of the guests' names. The show is actually going to start, and then the guests will not use their real names. They have to use, like, X, Y, Susie, whatever, not their name. And I will bring them on one by one for a reading after the show starts so that Gemma has no idea who it is. What a, what a cool idea. It's kind of like that old uh, game show, I've Got a Secret. Enter mystery yes. guest and sign in, please. Everybody's wearing a blindfold. Nobody knows who it is. You have to try to figure it out. I think uh, that's a cool concept. That should be a great program. Yes, I'm excited about it. So that'll be show number 19. And uh, another announcement, we are actually, uh, we have a, a new company that we're forming, which is US Global TV. So I've already filed everything for that. So that should be in effect as of the end of the month. Good. Media Empire time. Dynamite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Al. Our next show is coming up quickly, and it's A Better You. And since you're the creator of A Better You, I would love for you to share with our audience what it's all about and why they should want to get involved. This this one is really simple. I, I, first of all, I, I appreciate the ideas uh, beginning to take off, and I, I know that a lot of people are getting excited about it. There are people out there. They are maybe coaches. They may be consultants. They may, they may be trusted advisors. Each of them has a specialty, a skill. They, each of them has uh, is uh, an expert in a certain body of knowledge. Uh, Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline's A Better You platform is an opportunity for people with a story to tell to get in front of an audience of people who need to hear that story, who need to learn those lessons. So for 15 minutes, you get to explain to somebody how to do something, how to make a change in their lives, how to amp up their performance professionally or live a more fulfilling personal life. And... Um, and that library is growing and a lot of people are taking advantage of it. There's still plenty of opportunities out there for people to jump on the bandwagon. How do they do that, Dr. Jacqueline? It's so simple, Al. All they have to do is go to a betteryou.tv. And what I want them to understand is there are actually three opportunities. The first is to come on our show live and present. And this helps you with your business, with your branding. It helps you with your confidence. You present a lesson of how to be better personally or professionally. Then we'll ask you to edit that lesson out of the show write a five question quiz and then we'll help you build a playlist of lessons that will be available for sale on our platform which we are launching july 15th and then finally the third part is we are actively planning an in-person event that looks like it's going to be in orlando the third week of october it's called journey to a better you. This is October, 2022. And we will have coaches, consultants, trusted advisors, keynote speakers. We will have a trade show floor. So for those of you who are interested, we are gonna start pre-selling that event, I think August the 1st. That's exciting. It is, it is. It's, it'll be exciting for us all to go to Orlando and learn from each other, breakout sessions. If you're an author, book signing. So the sky's the limit of what can accomplish, be accomplished there in terms of that and networking. Excellent. All right, we've got one more comment. Oh, there, here it is, beautiful. So this is from Robert J. Moore. If you are looking to upbrand yourself and want to be part of a Guinness World Record, click the link. So obviously I will take this link and put it on my social media also, uh, but the it's an Eventbrite with the name of his business, Magnetic Entrepreneur Guinness World Records tickets and a number. And as Robert just said, if people can't click on it, they're going to forget it. So I will put it all over my social media and you'll be able to click right there and go ahead and sign up for the event. Thank Thanks, you, Robert. Man. All right, Mr. Sini, I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thank you for a great day with the Celebrate Great Britain Royally Rich Show and our business show. Thanks very much, Dr. Jacqueline. Wouldn't miss it. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye now.
Thank you, folks. As I mentioned, we have a better you lessons from the best coaches, consultants and trusted advisors coming up. That's at four o'clock Eastern time, which is 9 p.m. British summertime. And right after that, we have in the name of love. That's at 5 p.m. And my co-host is Kimmy Seltzer. So we we'll look forward to seeing you then. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is a little selfish plug for my book. My book is Behind the Green Screen, How to Succeed in the Live Broadcasting Business. And this is a book that has vulnerable stories, vulnerable shares about how and why I left the corporate world. And it also has uh, every step you need to take to build a broadcasting platform like I've done. Uh, it hasn't even been a year I started on the radio with a phone and somebody calling me from the radio station that was in july or august of last year and from there we went on to zoom and from zoom we went to Streamyard. from Streamyard, we had one show which was actually this one and then we went uh, and continued to grow and now we have 19 shows and i stand for all the shows because i stand for people who are unable to stand if you'd like me to stand for you please email me if you'd like to be a guest on our show if you'd like to be a presenter on a better you if you'd like to be a sponsor it's so easy just go to drjacqueline.com and all the information you need is right there thank you again for being here look forward to seeing you again very soon at 4 p.m right around the corner take care